Welcome to my 2024 NFL predictions. Once again, this year I will be doing week by week instead of full season. I have like a general full season predictions um, like weeks ago, but yes, here I am and let's just jump right into it. First of all, for the first game of the season, we got Baltimore Ravens at Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I don't think the Chiefs, I mean, they could literally only win like eight games, manage to squeak in the playoffs, and still have like at least like a 99% chance to win the Super Bowl. So, and I mean, also they lost last year week one to a much worse Lions team than this Ravens team is, and the Chiefs have also, I'd say, probably gotten better, but they won a Super Bowl last year, so yeah. I'm going to personally say that the Baltimore Ravens are going to win here. It just makes sense. Ravens, they're going to want revenge, all that stuff. And I don't think the Chiefs could give a single shit what happens in the regular season, just as long as they get into the playoffs. Now, next up, we got the Eagles and the Packers in Brazil. You already know I'm going to be cheering hard. My whole family, I'm from Wisconsin. They're all Packers fans, but I'm an Eagles fan. I was really hoping this, that this game would be in Green Bay or Philly, but it's in Brazil, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, personally... Packers historically have gotten out to a slow start. I mean, last year for the first half of the season, they were a bottom feeder, but they're now obviously pretty good. Um, and I don't think that a starting slow is going to change. And Eagles already are a better team. I think if this was week 15 or week one, I would still choose the Eagles, and that's what I'm going to do here. So, yeah, but I mean, realistically, it's Brazil. Literally anything could happen. Next, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Atlanta Falcons. Now, two very interesting teams. Uh, the Steelers have Mike Tomlin, so he's at least going to guarantee to win, what, nine games at least. And then the Falcons, obviously an interesting case. Complete mystery what they're going to do with, you know, new head coach, Kirk Cousins. It's going to be an interesting one. And the Steelers are starting Russell Wilson, but they still have an elite defense. It's going to be a good game. I think this is going to be one of the sleeper games to actually be like a, a, fu a fun game. But I think I'm going to choose Kirko to start out. I mean, it's not prime time, so he's actually going to be a good quarterback. So I think Falcons is a fair shout, but would not be surprised if Steelers could pull it out of their ass. Next up, we have the Buffalo Bills beating the Arizona Cardinals. Nothing else I have to say there, unless if, I don't know, Kyler is finally good, but come on. Next, we got the Titans versus the Bears. A very interesting one, as historically, since 2002, rookie quarterbacks that were taken number one overall have been 0-14-1, so it's going to be interesting to see how Caleb Williams does. Obviously, the average number one overall picking team is not even close to as good as the Bears are, so that's going to be in favor of... Caleb and the Titans they're not awful they have a decent defense I would say obviously I did like Legereus Sneed and Tony Pollard that's going to be interesting obviously a massive downgrade from Derrick Henry um but I I don't know I really don't know this could 100% go either way but based off of Caleb Williams looking at least pretty decent he's going to be a fun quarterback if he's going to be a bad quarterback um at the very least I'm going to pick the Chicago Bears to come out the season firing against the Titans. And next up, we have the Bengals. Yeah, they're beating the Patriots. Not a no, no shot. The Patriots are beating the Cincinnati Bengals. Even if, like, Joe Burrow gets hurt and whoever their backup is has to come in. Next up, oh my god, this is going to be another fantastic game. It's going to be Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. We're going to get Anthony Richardson back. He was awesome until he got hurt. And obviously, CJ Stroud, one of the best rookies, at least rookie quarterbacks of all time. And, oh my god, I cannot wait for this one. This is going to be so much fun. It could go either way, but I don't know. I think looking at it, you know, by position, CJ started probably better than Anthony Richardson, but I think Anthony could 100% get up to CJ's level this year. Running backs, Jonathan Taylor, he's certainly better than Joe Mixon when obviously not hurt, so that's really a bit more even there. Um, receivers... Texans definitely have him there, um, especially, I mean, I guess, Michael Pittman on the Colts, and also, you know, the rookie. Offensive line, probably more Colts, but Texans also have a good one. Defense overall, I'd say probably more Texans, so I think I'm going to go with the Texans, but honestly, 
would not be surprised if uh, Anthony Richardson could pull it out because I still think he's fantastic. But I do think Texans is a pretty fair shout here. And then next we have the Jacksonville Jaguars heading to Miami. Going to be an interesting one. I think at this point it's probably solidified that Trevor Lawrence is not what he is supposed to be. But I think that this year is really the final one where it actually is possible. Um, unless if it's like 10 years down the line and he's a backup and it turns into some sort of Geno Smith. But ah, it's a tough one here. I think it's certainly going to be Dolphins uh, for the Battle of Florida. Um, I guess the east coast of Florida, the Atlantic part of Florida. Um, but yeah, Dolphins much better. Next we have the New Orleans Saints with Carolina Panthers. And I mean, anything could happen. Again, Bryce Young is fundamentally, realistically, a still a rookie quarterback, obviously. He was bad, which most likely means he's still going to be bad for the rest of his career. And his team hasn't really changed except for maybe on defense. I guess I did get Deontay Johnson. Feel bad for that guy. But I really should stop talking. It's going to be the Saints. And then next, we got a bit of a playoff rematch from a few years ago. The New York Giants hosting the Minnesota Vikings. And obviously... JJ McCarthy, he's not going to be starting because he's hurt, which would have been smart to not start him anyway, so I think it's not a terrible um, uh, event for the Vikings overall. Um, but the Giants, oh boy, oh lord, they are absolute dog shit. I mean, they're bad. Um, and the Vikings, they're not too much better, but they're still a lot better. And I think it's pretty easily going to be the Vikings. And then next up, we got an AFC West bout. We got the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Las Vegas Raiders. And two interesting teams, obviously. Chargers coming into the year with J Jim, John, whichever Harbaugh it is. And obviously, one of the better quarterbacks and one of the probably more underrated quarterbacks in Justin Herbert. And a decent team around him. His big two receivers left, so now he's left with Quinton Johnston, so that's not great. Obviously, they got Joe Alt, fantastic selection. Obviously, Millie Neighbors was there, but they still got Ladd McConkie, which I think is good value. Um, defense is awesome. I do think that the Chargers defense is one of the most underrated units, with obviously Joe, Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack coming off of a career year, and other studs like Asante Samuel Jr., and then the Raiders, another interesting one, obviously Antonio Pierce, and they're going to be starting Gardner Minshew, which I feel like people are really underrating Gardner Minshew. He's not great, definitely a backup quarterback, but he nearly took the Colts to the playoffs by himself it, if it weren't for Tyler Goodson dropping the goddamn football. And he has one of the best receivers in the league with Devonta Adams, and Max Crosby is incredible, and... It really is going to depend on Antonio Pierce, but I think I'm going to take the safe one with the Chargers and Harbaugh. I think it just is safer, but I don't know. I feel like the Raiders set that they still have a good chance, and I mean, it's division rival. Anything could happen. Next, we have a classic, classic matchup that uh, appeared a few years ago with the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks. Just a couple of differences. Still Geno Smith playing for the Seahawks, but brand new head coach, and the Broncos don't got big old Russell. Instead, they got Bo Nix, and Zach Wilson also got traded, which probably a terrible trade for the Broncos. I mean, who else do they have at backup? Jarrett Stidham? Oh, God. So, yeah, Seahawks, I think, playing in Seattle, Mike McDonald, yeah, I think it's, they still have a better team than the Broncos by a long shot. But again, Bo Nix starting, anything could happen. And he has some playmakers, Devontae Williams, Cortland Sutton. But I do think I'm going to take the safe one just to start out. Bo Nix, 100% could win this game. But I'm going to take the Seahawks just to be safe. Next up, we have also a pretty good matchup. We got the Dallas Cowgirls versus the Cleveland Browns. And is this going to be another year where the Cowboys are fantastic in the regular season? Then shit their pants in the first round or second round? Maybe, because this team is, this core at least, is certainly starting to fall apart with Jerry Jones' absolutely just disgustingly terrible management, 
and horrible contract situation with Dak, CD, and Micah. It's just a complete mess, which I love to watch as an Eagles fan. Just absolute just piece of art, I tell you. Um, so I think this year could be at least the start of a downfall. The Cowboys with the weaker NFC should probably still make the playoffs. They're still a great team. Their defensive back room is awesome and all that stuff. And that's the most Cowboys compliments you're getting out of me today because the Browns, oh boy, I mean, this is, this team is just the epitome of one quarterback away because if Deshaun Watson becomes his MVP itself, the Browns are winning the Super Bowl. I mean, they have one of the best teams in the league. But the quarterback situation is just tough, man. They give this just a shit load of money to big old Cosby over here, and he's still not good. I mean, if he's not good through the first half of this season, they should not start him. They should just develop DTR. I mean, good God, dude. I love Deshaun Watson as a player, as a player. Don't clip that as a player. I love him as a player. He was fantastic, but I don't think he is anymore. But I mean, yeah. I do think that the Cowgirls are going to get the first dub uh, against the Browns because I don't think Deshaun is going to play well um, against the Cowgirls' defense. And I mean, just with how fantastic of a team the Browns have, it's just so hard to imagine that he can play bad, but he has. And yeah, I think it's going to be the Cowgirls yeah i think probably but brown's totally good they're honestly better if they have a mid to upper tier quarterback then next up we have the tampa bay buccaneers versus the washington commanders honestly this could be a really interesting one as i am fully expecting the baker mayfield cycle just just to continue i mean i don't know why people are buying so much into the baker mayfield hype it happened last time with the Browns. It happened last time with the Rams. <laughs> we have two incredible pieces of evidence for this. And are people just going to ignore it again? I guess so. Obviously, the Buccaneers have a decent team. Still pretty young. And I think if they put in a young quarterback, it would be fantastic for the future. But Baker is just not that guy. He's just, he's just not that guy. Uh, now, moving to the Commanders, however... They definitely have some holes, but the defensive line, incredible. Their running back room is incredible, even though Austin Eckler obviously fumbles, but they still have, you know, Brian uh, Robinson. Wide receiver room, now without Jahan Dotson, a little bit more shaky. Um, and quarterback, obviously, Jane Daniels. You just don't know. And honestly, I think this is going to be the game where I'm predicting the starting quarterback, it's a rookie, to win. I mean, it's going to be a close game. I think it honestly should be a good game as well. But just the Baker Mayfield cycle, people are ignoring it. It's going to happen again. And I think it's giving a perfect opportunity for Jane Daniels in his first start. Now into the second round of primetime games. We got the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Detroit Lions. And, ooh, fantastic playoff game last year. Did they do that last year? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Uh, I forgot about that one. Um, obviously Matthew Stafford once again coming back to Detroit. I think at this point Lions fans are like, oh, I love you guy, but we're on Jared Goff now. And Jared Goff has become one of the best quarterbacks, probably even top five statistically in the league, especially with one of the top three receivers in the league at Damon Ra. And this team is so good. I mean, it's going to take another level of Puka Nakua magic to be able to take down the Lions which is such a weird thing to be saying that the Lions are a fantastic football team and franchise, but it's true, and I think they're going to win here in primetime. Now for the final game of the regular, not the regular season, thank God not yet, um, week one, we got Aaron Rodgers in Jets, sack exchange uniforms, playing the guy that inj injured him last year, in prime time, it's just, I feel like all these negatives, it's just such an amount of double negatives that Aaron Rodgers is just going to go and have an MVP season. I mean, the last time his team drafted a quarterback named Jordan, he won two MVPs, so super possible, man. Super possible, I'm telling you. 
but I'm, what am I kidding? Niners are going to win either way, uh, but I do think Jets, it's going to be interesting to see A-Rod there. I mean, he's probably going to be terrible. I'm just going to be honest. I think his lowest is like garbage tier. Most likely, probably like mid-tier for this whole year at least. And then there's a slim chance that he goes back to Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. A bit of a quicker video, a bit uh, faster paced. Let me know if you like it, and I'll see you next time. See you.